So if you've ever played World of Tanks, you're probably wondering what the best or most favoured tanks are within World of Tanks and this video is aiming to showcase some of my favourites, the ones that I think are maybe not necessarily the most competitive as in they will suddenly make you become a god at the game, uh, but they will definitely give you some enjoyment. We're going to look at also those tanks that are just ridiculously good for the tier as well and we're going to combine them all into one video. Video. It should be fairly short, we're just going to rattle through some of them, give the overview of each of the tanks and hopefully you do enjoy the video. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Now the first tank to have a look at is of course the Excalibur, the tier 6 um, British premium tank that is in the game and you can pick it up for pretty cheap to be honest with you it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg and if it goes on sale any at any point within the game then yeah you'll be able to pick it up pretty cheap. This tank is not the best within any regard at tier 6 but what it offers is just a completely novel kind of play style and you really do have to think when you play in this tank that isn't necessarily something like an IS-3 or any of the Russian tanks where you can pretty much do alright if you just angle the front of your tank slightly and just drive forward at the opponents where you know you're going to have a good game. You try and do this in the Excalibur and you'll be coming off a lot worse for wear than those Soviet ones will do. And that's because it has absolutely no armour. It doesn't have a turret, fully rotating turret. I mean, it does have pretty ridiculous gun arc though. Um, and yeah, it's pretty boxy. The key factors about the tank are, you know, you have to stay undetected and be a true sniper with this tank and then move around the map and relocate using the speed that the tank offers. And it really is one of those superbly fun tanks to play. Hence why I've actually three marked it. I've had a few gameplays of this tank. This is genuinely my favourite tank within World of Tanks um, ever. Out of all of the tanks, all of the tiers, this is my favourite tank. Hence why I've played it so much and why I continuously go back to it I just think it offers something so much uh, that you can just do anything with it although you can't bounce very many shots I, I won't say that you can anyway Enough of me tooting the horn of the Excalibur, let's move on to the second tank, which is of course another premium. Unfortunately, if you are wanting some non-premiums, there are some in this video, hence the next tank, but this one is the T-50-2. This one is a light tank that is just so nippy within the game. It's so, so quick. It has a fast, fast firing gun. It genuinely reloads in about one second. You can pump out that damage. It does have 85 damage per shell, and if you're firing standard rounds, you're going to be pretty um oh god worse for wear especially in those tier 8 games that you can get in in this thing however if you do load premium which you're gonna need uh, hence why i run 50 50 premium with this tank um yeah it's for those tier 8 games where you genuinely won't pen anything from the front with 112 penetration so this tank running rings around your opponents just jumping off of cliffs it really is so so fun there's so much diversity you know you can play it like a complete fun aspect tank where you don't really care how well you do you just yolo in and you uh, sprint around the battlefield and you just take out heavies from full health by just circling them and they've got absolutely no chance or you can play it more passively use the vision of the tank and the concealment and just actually be a true scouting light tank um, obviously it's got just that diversity and I, that's why I love it at tier 6. Moving on, the STRV-74, once again a tank that is perfect at tier 6. This is probably the most competitive out of the three tanks we've just featured. This one has an absolutely amazing frontal um, kind of damage uh, potential basically. If anything is in front of you, you'll be able to just rinse it. You've got a superb penetration on your standard rounds for tier 6s and if you do need to fire your premium rounds at the tier 8s that you can come up against with this thing, then 200mm makes them pretty much penable from any angle really. Um, yeah, you're going to find it slightly hard to come up against some of the defenders and stuff, but then again, most tanks at whatever tier you're playing have a little bit of struggle with those kind of tanks, but this one 
fantastic, DPM is fantastic, and you really will not realise how good this tank is unless you jump in it. It's only tier 6, it doesn't take long to grind towards, and believe me, when it gets fully upgraded, it is a fantastic tank. Um, is it the best tank at tier 6? No. Um, but yeah, I think it will definitely be one of the better ones that I've played, at least personally. It suits my playstyle, fantastic medium tank, and yeah, really great gun depression and DPM. Coming in at number 7, we have, of course, four tanks to be talking about. We have the T-29. Now, if you're interested in an all-out heavy tank that can use its turret armour, has a fantastic gun, has a pretty okay top speed, has fantastic um, kind of armour model for the tier, at least, um, yeah, then the T-29 is just absolutely perfect. For those of you who haven't played the tank, it is probably the best heavy tank in the American Tech Tree line, Leading up to the T110E5 out of all of them I would say that this is potentially the best one tier for tier obviously if you're coming up against the tier 10 it's going to be better but what I mean is is it competitive for the tier it's at this tier 7 is amazing playing up to tier 9 you can deal your damage consistently against any of the opponents that you play up against and yeah it really is just a fantastic tank the only tank I've managed to get a Colobanos medal in um, and it was an actual Colobanos medal as well where you actually had to take out the tanks not just sit in the cap circle and win against 5 opponents but there we go the T29 uh, is just fantastic really is one of my favourite heavy tanks and I really should get back to playing it get out a video for you guys showcasing just how good this non-premium tank is and why you should go towards it. Now moving on, there could be none other than the Tiger 1. The, of course, iconic tank of World War II. Just an absolutely such a nice tank to play. Visually looks perfect within the game. They've really nailed it down. And also just the sheer DPM that the tank gets. That 240 alpha damage pumping it out very, very regularly makes this tank just fantastic in game. You've also got a very nice top speed of 40 kilometers an hour. You can outspot opponents, but it doesn't happen that often. But you would have to put coated optics on enable to do that or advanced optics um, but I genuinely think that if you haven't played the Tiger line the whole line leading up to the E100 and basically uh, any of the ones past this the Tiger 2 they are just ones you have to play at some point I don't think you can avoid them I think it's just one of those things that you will un enjoy actually grinding towards the line is particularly not bad so you don't really have any terrible ones I guess if you went the Tiger P route you might have a little thing to say about that but yeah the Tiger one is just a fantastic one that I think we have to showcase within this moving on then we have the overpowered German tank and that is of course the E25 probably one of the more competitive tank destroyers within the game uh, regardless of the tier this is just a fantastic one preferential matchmaking meaning that it can only go up to tier 8 with a gun that fires every like two seconds or whatever the ridiculous rate of fire of the tank is it might even be slightly higher 2.7 second reload time dealing 150 uh, 135 damage every single time you hit your opponent and that is just consistent throughout it has 71 kilometers an hour top speed with fuel that is uh, we of course have um, advanced rations or enhanced rations even uh, and then we whacked on the traction system and advanced loader and advanced optics and if you really want to run the camo build it is perfect tank for that it's just an outrageously pretty much broken tank that wargaming released a long long time ago they're never going to really nerf this tank i just don't see that it's going to happen is it outrageously broken so that anyone without a brain can play it and suddenly do superb no you do actually have to have a little bit of a brain in your uh, in your head but yeah it's definitely one of those that if you do really Realize how to use camo concealment and the rate of fire to track down your opponents and just knock them out continuously then this is just outrageous within the game now moving on we have another just outrageously broken tank within tier 7 let's talk about let's add a kv2 on a tank that can go fast or at least reasonably fast for a heavy tank then we're going to give it good accuracy then we're going to give it 250 pen and have 700 alpha don't worry though because if you do actually want to fire some of that he like the kv2 does at tier 6 
you can load pre well he and deal 910 damage with this thing and trust me this tank is just utterly broken every tank you come up against you can pretty much pen t and nines have no real armor against you with 250 pen dealing them i would really highly suggest just firing heat in this tank it just is it makes its money back because it's a premium tank it does 700 damage consistently and if you do come up against those lightly armored tanks you could even run the equipment that actually enables you to swap between your ammo for free enabling you to fire the heat he rounds into those lightly armored uh, opponents because 86 penetration is more than enough to go through the majority of tanks it is genuinely one of the most ridiculous tanks that i think wargaming have ever brought in to the game and of course if you platoon it up you can basically ruffle stomp tier 9 games with these things because the alpha damage just poking around a corner derping your 700 straight into the front of them then pulling back and then your teammate doing it consistently in a three-man platoon 2100 damage dealt pretty much every single tier 9 in the game will get taken out from three shots of these things and they do pen so so reliably and the accuracy due to the update 6.0 has made this thing probably more broken than usual right then so tier 8 moves on now and we're going to look at which ones i think are the best of course we have of the first one being the broken tank destroyer i don't think anyone will ever really complain with this being on the list you could potentially swap it out for something like an su-130 pm which is another broken tank it really depends on your playstyle. they're both very similar the su basically gets more alpha damage um i think that you aren't really missing out on too much if you pick the scorpion g uh, it really is down to personal preference there's just basically a soviet version of the scorpion g is the su 130 pm or the shashka as it's otherwise known this is of course the um skinned version of the Rheimatau Scorpion I have both because unfortunately I got both out of a, one out of a key card and the other one out of an operation so it's unfortunate I didn't get the same one because then I would have got the gold value back anyway moving on to the tank itself 490 alpha reloading in a ridiculous fashion um 12.2 second reload 490 alpha you can deal nearly five shots per minute base that's without equipment or a commander so you can deal what's that five lots of five, 2450 alpha damage per minute with this tier 8 tank destroyer trust me that is superb dpm for tier 8 and if you factor into the equation the advanced loader which boosts that by 10% and then you factor in maybe ventilation by 5% and then you factor in uh, the combat rations or enhanced rations as they're called now um, that basically gets boosted to a inordinate amount of um, DPM that you will really not actually uh, be able to believe about nine second reload which means that you can get off about six shots so you're dealing nearly 3,000 DPM with a tier 8 tank destroyer that can go 60 kilometers an hour has 360 meters of vision and more than enough penetration with its standard and premium rounds to go through anyone up to tier 10 so it really is just one of those tank destroyers that if you're into the borsig if you're into any of the gorilla line this one is a fantastic one to pick up as far as the other ones well of course we want to try and diversify it so we have got the back chat Barask. This one is a autoloader. I, I call it an autoloader. It's like a double barrel tank type thing where you just one, two, uh, hit them with the left, hit them with the right, and then you can get out of there using the speed of the tank. It's got a double pumper, 360 alpha damage with your first one, 360 with the second, 720 total, um, and 190 penetration with your standard, 240 with your premium. More than enough to go through any of the front of most premium tanks uh, at tier 8 and any tanks up to tier 10, as long as you're aiming at the weak points, um, especially when you're looking at the higher tiers. Um, and of course, you can use the mobility to get around your opponents and use the concealment that the tank offers um, with the disparity between the vision range and the still concealment being very good, um, meaning that you can stay undetected whilst also firing. And that's what makes this tank, it's such a rat. You can basically just go up, do your damage and then leave essentially for the next 20 something seconds when you're reloading. DPM is 
fairly average, pretty poor to be honest. You're not going to be able to deal that much with this tank, but it relies upon you just positioning yourself. If you can position yourself on World of Tanks, the Barask is the perfect example of what you can do within the game. And I would 100% recommend anyone that is interested in just getting better at the game, learning the mechanics, this is a perfect tank for you to do that in. Now this third tank, very unlikely I would say, is a Chinese light tank. Now yes, before you click off this video, think I'm an absolute madman, this tank is genuinely one of the most underrated tanks in the game. I have had so many just insane games. I think this is my highest XP earned within one singular game I've ever had on World of Tanks in this tank. Probably sways it a little bit in terms of how good this tank can be. But essentially 9000 combined damage in a WZ132 at tier 2. 10 was the game that I had and then I had another 8,000 damage game in another battle and it really does pump out the damage very quickly. The um, DPM of the tank is, you know, it's a light tank so it doesn't have the best DPM um, but it definitely allows you to deal that damage and move about the battlefield using the speed. You've also got fantastic accuracy on the move which was um, something I wasn't expecting from these tanks and considering they're a tier 8 light tank with fairly high alpha of 250 you can trade with some of the mediums at tier 8 as well as um, coming up against some tier 9 mediums that have low or stock guns then yeah it really does work out so well and the speed the vision range just everything about the tank made it such a nice fun tank to play and it does really look so so nice when you put on some of the camouflages that the tank can get other than that i think we'll move on to the final one of tier 8 and this is probably the most broken premium tank within world of tanks period it genuinely is a fantastic and definitely the best premium I've ever played within the game. This is just ridiculous. It gets very good penetration on its standard rounds. It gets even better penetration to alpha damage on its premium rounds. It gets Hesh rounds, so if you've ever played any of the British uh, medium tanks or any of the British tank destroyers that get the Hesh rounds where you have slightly lower penetration but significantly higher alpha damage, then this is one of those tanks. It's tiny, it goes 50 kilometers an hour forward, it has amazing steel concealment, it has amazing vision range, it has just everything you could possibly want from a medium slash tank destroyer slash light tank, I call it all of these things. It just has everything and it really does blow the um, other premiums within tier 8 out of the water and it really is used when in comparative um, to some of the other tanks just superbly better and you can see that by the damage standing statistics of the tank on any of the um, marks of excellence calculators it's just ridiculously higher fantastic tank i would recommend it 100 percent if you don't already own it and if it comes on sale that is a perfect time to buy it really is amazing i uh, don't know how else i can <laughs> say how good this tank is um but yeah a fantastic one i think i averaged about three and a half thousand damage in this thing every single game over a course of um a lot of games yeah it just is amazing now it wouldn't be a World of Tanks video if the top 5 or top tanks of each tier didn't include the T95, this tier 9 <laughs> Doom Turtle that I just adore. As much as I thought it would be terrible having a top speed of 20 km an hour and moving around the map so slow and getting circled by light tanks, if you actually use this tank correctly and you use the alpha damage of 750 with an insane reload speed of 16 seconds, meaning that you can have a DPM of about 3000, but bearing in mind that super effective DPM because you only have to fire four shots for it to essentially be that 3000, and so this tank becomes utterly bonkers. And the armor profile of the tank, we've done videos on the T95, um, is just amazing. It really is a tank that bounces rounds and that can't be said for too many within World of Tanks I would 100% implore you it's a free to play tank that you don't have to pay for and if you haven't already go towards it give it a good old go yes the line grinding up to it with the T28 and stuff like that within the tech tree is not particularly 
the nicest of lines but when you do get to the t95 it's very very good tank and i it was worth grinding the line just to get this tank i know the t110 e3 is particularly just a worse version of the e4 um but the t95 is so so good and when you're coming up against tigers that you can do with this tank one shot ammo racks mm, they come across a fair old amount Anyway, moving on, we'll look at the second tank within our list, and that's of course the T-54 Lightweight. I've used this tank maybe about 30, 35 times. I absolutely love it so far. We've gone for the full ramming build, and that is where I think the tank has come into full force, where we can just ram into those enemy light tanks and deal uh, maybe 800, 900 hit points worth of damage into the opponent light tanks, because you are essentially a super speeded um, medium tank of the Soviet line, being that T-54. It's just an amazing one and I would recommend it to any of you guys. It's yet again a free tank, you don't have to pay for it, um, so I cannot implore you to get it any more than I already am. Now I think moving on, we don't really have that many premiums that we can kind of showcase, um, but what we will feature is some of the other uh, tanks that I think are fairly decent at the tier, and that is of course being some of the tech tree tanks that we'll have a look at right now. So a tank that I think is kind of overlooked in today's current meta is the T10. It really is a traditional heavium kind of playstyle tank where you've got decent mobility, you've got a fantastic high alpha damage gun that you can dump into all of the enemy heavies that you're playing up against. I think it really is, but it's not necessarily the most competitive heavy tank at tier 9. I think that would probably go to something like a Conqueror, but it has to be said that this tank is just um, one of the ones I loved. I love the look of it. I think it works so, so well in game. And the line that it leads up to being that Object 277 is a fantastic one as well that I just think really needs to be shown to you guys. I'm going to do a video on the Object 277 very soon to showcase just how good that tank actually is within the game. Now, leading on from tier 9, of course we have to look at tier 10, and that is exactly what we're going to plan to do right here. So, first things first, tank that I adore, T57 Heavy, it is by far my most played actual tank, of course my most played tank is actually the T92, but the T57 Heavy comes in at a close second and this is because of the autoloader that this tank gets. Four shots of 400 alpha damage mean that you've got a grand total of 1600 damage that can be consistently put out against your opponents. A lot of the time, and by the way, by the emphasis on consistently, that's because it gets good accuracy, it gets a gun that is reliable, the intraclip reload is fantastic, and the armor profile can be bouncy. You don't bounce that many within the T57 Heavy, but you can, and I think that the opportunity with the autoloader where you essentially just go, well, I can take a 390 alpha damage hit, clip you for 1600, pull back around the corner, use the support of my teammates, and then I'm not going to take any more damage than that. So you essentially deal 1200 damage for every 390 alpha damage you may take from some of the opponents that you come up against. Obviously it varies on where you're playing and sometimes you get caught out in the open, sometimes they push you when you've unloaded your clip because you've got no teammates to kind of rely to help and hinder the opponents if they do decide to come around a corner or whatever where it's not worth it. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing tank, really is one of my favourites and I just don't think there's any tank really kind of that would pop it, pip it for me to be honest. I think of course we have to talk about my most played tank, the T92. Basically it's a broken tank, I use it when I'm just kind of fed up with the game, you just want to kind of jump on, be very casual, get your daily jo jobs done, you know, j hop on, deal damage, destroy eight enemies, blah blah blah, that you can see up in the top left corner for my daily challenges for season 9. Um, yeah, all you do, jump in this tank, 
blow up tanks for 2250 hit points if you pen or if you pen with AP it's even more satisfying as you see the round go in and the ammo rack having my highest alpha damage in one shot being 2700 on an E100 in one singular shot it was in a video recently if you want to check it out it's basically about artillery um, but there we go my most played tank I'm sorry guys if that really does upset you but I can't really help it what's done is done and I guess yeah we'll move on now another tank that I find is definitely one of those that you have to play is the FV4202. This is a tank that got removed by Wargaming because it wasn't competitive. They brought it back, gave it some buffs, turret armor buff, uh, it's got fantastic DPM, Hesh rounds. It is just the better of the two British medium tanks at tier 10 available on the standard tech tree. Um, an amazing combination of both vision, still concealment, hit points, just alpha damage ability to swap rounds it is just amazing i would 100 percent recommend it i'm going to try and three mark it at some point when i've got a bit of spare time to grind through and give you guys some more videos on the tank of course i have my highest damage game ever i think it being something like 15,000 combined damage in the fv4202 um very recently um in terms of my history on world of tanks about seven months ago something like that um but yeah you can check out that video i think it's titled my highest damage game ever um something like that fv4202 on what console so if you want to check that out you can do um but other than that we'll move on of course that it wouldn't be a top tier tier 10 kind of best list without the super conqueror the super broken basically just a, an overpowered tank with very very good turret armor that can't be really penned by anything even though you always hope to pen that cupola that's just unpenable uh, you've got just ridiculous spaced armor around the turret you've got a very good hull armor although the lower plate can be weak but overall a fantastic tank that you have to get your hands on once again all of these tanks are ones that i just would recommend to you so of course i'm going to say that you need to jump in the tank and play it as far as some other ones, of course the FV4005 is another one of my most played. It's another derp cannon, 1450 alpha damage, pumping that into opponents is so, so satisfying, especially when you pen and you just leave them crying about the fact they just walt waltzed around a corner into a 1450 alpha damage, 183 millimeter cannon and got taken and punished for it. Now moving on, I don't think there's much more to talk about that one. Uh, of course we have to talk about the Object 277, the one we mentioned. This tank is just everything I adore with a medium slash heavy tank and the heavium kind of playstyle within World of Tanks. The just insane tank overall um, really has that alpha damage, has the speed, has the armor, has the hit points. It's just got everything that you'll need and hopefully uh, you can try this out, test it, see whether you like it and give it a go. And the whole line leading up to it is just fantastic as well is3 i uh, t10 uh, object 277 all fantastic tanks really is a great way to go if you're wanting a starting tech tree within world of tanks then our final tank of the day there are some obviously honorable mentions that you can go through um, but it has to be the object 268 it's my classic it's one of the first tier 10s i got it has 850 alpha damage it reloads in about 10 seconds when you've got your rations actually activated and when you have a commander in it yeah 850 alpha damage every roughly um 12 seconds something like that i think it is actually um yeah it's just bonkers really is such a fantastic tank have to get it try it out yes there are alternatives in the object 268 version 5 but i just think it's more fun to get the non pay to win version and just give it a go other than that, TVP T5051, three mark this, just the autoloader, wow, fantastic, um, really is one of the tanks that I think you'll probably enjoy the most if you like your autoloaders. Other than that, that is all of my favourite tanks within World of Tanks for each of the tiers, hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you want me to look at some other tanks, maybe with more caveats, so tanks that aren't actually competitive but are fun, if you want me to do that, comment in the comment section down below. Give your thoughts as to your favourite tanks. Really want to find out what you guys think. And of course, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And check out some of the other videos on screen if you want some similar kind of videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you in one of those videos. Goodbye.